one for you, sir. Uh, calling this meeting to order for the regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for October 10th, 2019. The members should introduce themselves starting over here with Mel. Uh, good morning, I'm Mel Roop. Good morning, my name is Don Michaelman. Good morning, Ted Gamboji. Wow, uh, good morning, Ken Maverick. George. George Lee. Terry Marshall. Yep. And I'm George Sheets. We have in, in our audience here, we have our liaison, Jim Lamerson. He's the one over here in the nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have more conservative dressed Phil Good from the council. Welcome, glad you could make it. And um, this is kind of interesting today because uh, the project goes before planning and zoning and then it also goes be to the preservation commission I guess it's not part of art in public places, even though it's all the public area. But anyway, um, we'll get going with this. Uh, first, first of all, the approval of the September 26th meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? There was. Hi. <laughs> so I got here early. I'm still slow getting going. <laughs> Um, where is it here? I want to make sure I get the right minutes here. Uh, <clears throat> there was one, uh, one change that I wanted to make to clarify uh, some points I made at the meeting and I passed them on to staff yesterday and um, Michelle ha got that in the revised copy. I don't know if you saw what it was. Let me read it real quick. It's just a short sentence. On page three of the minutes, um, I, I wanted to add uh, words but to clarify the, what I was, the point I was making about the relationship between um, setbacks, which is the point we were supposed to address, and uh, density perception and things like that. So the revised wording, uh, that I would suggest it, which is in the copy she did. Commissioner Roop expressed concern about the relationship of the proposed setbacks and the density design of the project. Just to clarify, because it seemed a little confusing to me the way it was worded, but that was what was the point I made was the relationship but, uh, between setbacks and the perceived density. So I was trying to clarify that point. And also I had a question for um, Commissioner Mabarak. Uh, the uh, motion is given a 5-2 vote, but um, I got to thinking if, if I were on the council, I'd be curious to know why did two people vote against it? And I wanted to ask if, if you had any concerns about the fact that there was no clarification of why there were two votes. Thank you. Uh, actually, I do. We talked about, George and I spoke about that a bit yesterday, <clears throat> not just in reference to this case, but in, effectively in all cases, when there's not unanimity in our votes, I think it's important for the City Council to understand what went into the negative vote, because sometimes that can be very helpful. It may not stop anything but at least council may realize what's going on on some of the evaluations on some of these projects. But I too also have, and I apologize, Michelle, for not having gotten to you earlier. The reference in here which says, Commissioner Mabrak stated that he had originally suggested that this project be built on the basis of SF-12 zoning with 12,000 square foot lots. What that, the reason I made that recommendation back at that meeting was that it wasn't 12,000 square foot lots as much as it was on the density of SF-12, which was three, basically three to the acre. <coughs> so we weren't suggesting that the lots had to be 12,000 feet. And I don't know if that's what this says or not, but I didn't want the, I didn't want the uh, assumption to be that the lots had to be 12,000 square feet, yeah. just three per, three per acre. Right. I think, didn't, I think Tammy looked up for the 12th, 12 uh, the lots 
that they have to have what 35 percent free space isn't that correct for uh, if it's sf12 however doesn't that requirement go away if you're doing a pad it it does but i understand mr mabrak's uh, commissioner mabrak's um intention and i think a minor very minor modification to the language will make it clear that it's the density of sf12 and the sf12 setbacks that you were talking about absolutely right not not that each lot had to be 12,000 square feet we knew that couldn't happen that would have filled up the whole 30 acres or whatever it was so right. it was strictly the the number of lots that sf12 would have allowed but and, the and after the discussion we had yesterday um, um, commissioner Mabarak came in and talked to us briefly. Um, I've, I've added some additional language uh, to the staff report that's going to council, referencing some of the concerns that were expressed by those of you who voted no on that application, so that we do tell council what the, the, the minority in the vote um, actually had concerns about. So I've added a couple of sentences to a draft of the staff report. I haven't even shown it to Bryn yet um, with those changes. So. Just so you know, we will try to do our best to push forward information about why uh, the commission votes no or why there is a split, a difference in opinion of the commission. So it gives council even more to think about as part of their uh, decision-making decision process. And besides, what's one more page in a 500-page <coughs> council packet every couple of weeks, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other comments? Or Suggestions on the, on the minutes? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve and with those changes. Thank you. I move that we approve the minutes of the 28. September 26th meeting with the amendments proposed. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand, say aye. Aye. Okay, is approved. Okay, the next item on our agenda is a comprehensive sign plan for Bashford Courts, which we all are familiar with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for a comprehensive sign plan for one of our historic downtown buildings that is a multi-tenanted, multi-story, multi-tenanted building. Um, I'm gonna start out with just a brief location. Uh, the Courthouse Plaza is here. Uh, the building is this building, and the comprehensive sign plan affects these three faces. You can see there's the green, blue, and red uh, designations on this plan. Um, we'll step through each of those uh, building walls, uh, front first, the rear second, and then this side uh, last. Um, the purpose of comprehensive sign plans in the Land Development Code is to allow for uh, variations in sign um, number, quality placement, in order to encourage uh, compatibility of those signs across that particular property. So one of the things that we often see with a comprehensive sign plan is perhaps more or larger signs, but the signs have a consistent letter type or manufactured type throughout the building to give it a common theme or a common pattern of signage. And there is a benefit to doing that in that it makes the expectation of a viewer of those signs easier they're not going from a brightly lighted uh, neon sign here to a very dimly lighted sign next door that might be uh, pan channel letters or metal um, sign, um, individual sign letters with halo lighting behind them. It makes it very difficult for that to be a consistent pattern. In this particular case, the um, building is very well known to I'm sure all of you are very familiar with it. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, a sign advertising world's oldest rodeo was attached to the building. That is not technically a commercial sign by our uh, sign code definitions of what a sign is. Uh, signs advertise a, a business or a function or some type of product or offering at a location. Our definition is very specific, and it was done that way to exclude things like this where you're just identifying the building, not necessarily a particular function, and you're not necessarily um, going to apply sign codes to things like art, uh, murals, things that don't advertise a product or a business at a location. So in this case, the proposal, the blue bands that you see located above um, windows, uh, the upper story windows 
of the building are intended to be locations for signs um, that would give a consistent pattern of potential signs. There are, um, there are nine locations identified on this face that would allow signage of some type for the interior businesses within the building. And as you know, this is a little unique when it comes to multi-tenanted buildings in that it's all interior. So there's not much external exposure for the businesses that are there with the exception of signs in windows. And while our code doesn't cover signs in windows, um, we, allow, we allow them without um, um, requiring a permit for them. So if it's a sign inside of a window, we don't count it towards permitting. Uh, the problem with that is that it often results in a fairly cluttered appearance to a building instead of some pattern like this where we know, I, know, yeah. <laughs> I tried it, it doesn't fit my nose. Um, one of the things that, that this would do would create a, a pattern of expectation so you know where signs are going to be, you know where to look to see signs. Um, the yellow banded areas are intended to identify the building specifically as the Bashford Court. So you would have something um, potentially on the awning. The, there's a fixed rigid awning out front that could be placed out there. And there are examples of these in the packet that you have before you. And or something above that opening that would allow for them to advertise, again, the building and not individual tenants. Each of these locations would allow signs up to 75 square feet by the language in the um, matrix that you have, and I'll put that up in a moment. None of those locations would actually accommodate a sign of that size. They're going to be smaller than that. And one of the suggestions that staff made in, in the staff report for you to consider is requiring or limiting signs to stay within the band so they can't expand above or beyond. Um, below the band or crosswise um, outside of those bands. The 75 feet comes from a one-to-one -one ratio of building frontage to um, square footage of sign. Because of the location of the building under our code, the standard requirement would be a half a square foot per linear foot because the building is fronts immediately on the right of way. So the one for one that they're talking about really is not something that's going to be practically possible with an individual sign band. Um, again, there would be common lettering. You have examples of common lettering op options uh, in the uh, packet that you have before you as well. With the locations, the intent is to have either internally lighted signs or backlighted lettering. So the signs will be somewhat muted. Um, there are um, some examples shown in the packet of gooseneck type fixtures that would be top down reflected onto the sign. Those are not proposed. The business owner, or build, excuse me, the building owner is here and will be able to um, express that he does not desire those on the front of the building. We do have a couple of locations in the rear where they are probably um, the most appropriate way to light the sign. the rear of the property off of the alley and the public parking lot, there are two locations where potential tenant signs could go. Um, these would be visible from some distance away from the site. Um, obviously, the one closest to Montezuma would be the most visible. And then again, following the theme of the sign um, depiction on the front, the yellow area would be a building identification sign. So that would be something that references the Bashford Court's building. These two locations, because of their placement and easy proximity to the roof parapet, potentially could have uh, gooseneck type fixtures that would light downward onto the sign. It would also allow for painted wall signs as opposed to an affixed sign to the building. Painted wall signs are popular in some circumstances. On the west face of the building, and again, we'll point out the, the building line is here. So this is actually a separate structure outside of the control and ownership of this building owner. Um, they've depicted at this point the entire wall being available for some type of tenant signage. However, again, as we um, 
suggested limitations in the staff report. We've suggested limitations on this side um, wall of, of just a couple of locations, perhaps one at the front, one at the rear, very similar to this, to limit the location of signs. And I have a picture provided by the chair that helps describe why staff proposed this. There is an existing grandfathered billboard on the roof of this building that is um, rather difficultly placed if you want to put signs on the middle of the wall of that upper story. Front's visible. You can see it from Montezuma. You can see it from Gurley headed east. The rear back here behind the, the sign is visible if you're headed uh, east on Gurley Street as well. So we believe two locations is reasonable um, and anything in between would be behind the the uh, grandfathered billboard. And then I mentioned the matrix that just describes each of the sign types and locations. And again, it's keyed to the, the pictures that you've seen in, um, that I've displayed already. The, these, each of these types of signs are generally the similar types of signs that we see in other comprehensive sign plans. Um, the purpose is to have similar construction, similar letter fonts, um, letter sizing, um, things that make it compatible from one business sign to another business sign. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions you have specifically on the sign code or requirements, and we do have the building owner here who can answer questions about why various things are in the proposal. Under, under the awning in front there, are there also signs that say what's inside that area? Or? There is a sign under the awning identifying the Bashford Courts building. There are also permitted separately in um, the city's codes the allowance for the A-frame type signs. So there is an A-frame sign that identifies the internal businesses for pedestrians who are underneath of the awning and would not be able to see any of the signs on the face of the building. If you walk along the sidewalk, how do you know that a certain business is in this door? Again, the, it's the A-frame sign that would, would point you in. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's start with, uh, with Mel there. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, George. Sir? Appreciate this other picture here. Um, on the first page of your staff report, and you mentioned it here, uh, you s talked about uh, establishes nine ten assigned placements and you showed on the on the elevation that had the blue panels on it where those nine panels were the subsequent elevations in the submittal show m like 16 panels now are, are we being asked to approve just those nine or what about the other seven that are on the building there are the uh, the exhibits after that one show the total building is that this exhibit? So there's some additional, this packet is submitted to, was it that's, that display that you were talking about? Okay. Yes. Um, there are a number of things that are moving forward at the same time with this. Before you today is a conference of sign plan for the Bashford Courts building and that building actually is between this column and this column. Attached to it, further over, is the Burmester building. And the Burmester building is shown on this drawing included. So this is the combined two buildings. So yes, there are more placement locations shown because it's a combined building, but they're two separate ownerships, though they're combined, and they'll have a similar theme once it's been completed of painting and decor on the exterior of the building, the Burmester building is not part of the Conference of Sign Plan. So the nine placement locations are what you're looking at for the front of the building for tenant signage. So it's this specifically. The buildings have had variously individual and common ownership over the years. Um, it, they've also had a lot of cooperation between owners when they had separate owners. The world's oldest rodeo sign spans across both buildings. 
as a, a feature that was uh, done at a time when I believe there was a common owner. So at this point, we're just looking at the Bashford Courts building. Okay. I thought that was the case, but I wanted to be sure since we did get an exhibit that showed the we, whole thing. We have the same package that goes to our Preservation Commission tomorrow, and they will look at the entire facade renovations as well as the sign package you have today. So there's a separate review underway that will incorporate more than you have on your agenda. On this uh, exhibit here, um, uh, a couple of questions for clarification. On the other exhibits, one of the other exhibits, it showed just stars in each of these p five panels here. Does that mean that c stars are what's going to be there? Or it's kind of confusing. The, the the wording in the submittal seems to allow any signs in there, but one of the exhibits shows just stars in those five panels. I believe the stars are intended for the panels above. And again, stars on the building would not be considered signs for uh, our sign code definition. So the later exhibit, uh, which is, um, it would be PP, let's see. One of them showed five star stars only in those panels. Where was that? PP2? There was another one that actually showed five. Oh. There was one that actually showed five stars in those panels. On the second one? No, it actually drew stars, not just a, a note. Anyway, could you clarify that? So, so those panels will not be a row of five stars. Those could be any signage, right? That's per those, the plan. those will likely be tenant signs in those locations. Um, my guess is that those, sign, those stars were placed in the wrong location. I believe they'll be up above. So those would actually be in this band. Okay. Um, In, look, in reading the text of all the detail with the criteria and so forth and applying it here, it's kind of hard to review elevation without actually seeing a proposed or typical signage. Um, it appears that in total, the proposed plan would allow every surface of, of the building above the awning to be signed uh, all of the building panels here, the windows would allow this kind of thing, the way it's worded. So the only thing left on this building that doesn't have signs on it are these columns. Do I read that correctly? It is. I mean, if you multiply is the this one here, if you, you know, show every window to have right. some kind of display in it, plus all these panels, that just leaves the columns untouched by signs. Is that right? That is a potential, yes. Again, under our sign code, we don't count signs in windows. So we wouldn't count the signs in the windows, but they could certainly be right. there. I sus suspect that it would be a good question to ask the building owner um, as to whether signs in the windows will be permitted by um, him and his own operations. Yeah. On the point about square footage of sign, on page three where the uh, sign criteria are shown, um, under Roman numeral two, number five. I read that one several times, uh, just straight English, and it could be read a couple of ways. And one way is the total sign area on the elevation is 75 square feet, not for each sign. Maybe that needs some rewording to clarify that. It says the sign area per building, el per building elevation shall not exceed one square feet for each lineal foot of building frontage. That doesn't say per sign, it says per building elevation. And that so is... you can take that to mean... That is different than what's in the matrix table that identifies square footages by type of sign. So I do agree that may be something we need to clarify before yeah. we move that forward. Mm -hmm. um, that is good. something you can clarify in your motion as well if you want to put a specific limit. Yeah, I I would. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time. I've got other comments on the other 
frontage or the other elevation. So I'll yield to the others to it. Yes, uh, George, has the downtown partnership had an opportunity to make any comments concerning this sign package? No, sir. Okay. With the current uh, route, well, let's see. What does the current uh, status allow for signage area for this building? If uh, Strictly under the current code. Yes. If we were just to apply the current code, it is a half a square foot of sign per linear foot of building frontage. And that would be a total of how many square feet? 39. Yeah, 39. Roughly. And how many square feet are they asking for? It will depend on the actual sizes of the sign, but it's somewhat larger than that. About 10 times? Roughly. More than 10? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, our body does not recommend fonts, does it? You know, like saying it because of the world's oldest rodeo, then the other, other letters should be of that same font? Or I think you have the option to recommend um, any aspect. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to require a particular font in an approval because that's something that's left for other signage throughout town um, at the discretion of the building owner mm -hmm. or the business in particular. Um, but you can certainly make recommendations, absolutely. But it's more of a preservation commission item, isn't it, in terms of using an old style lettering font? and Preservation will look at this project from a slightly different perspective, including the potential for font type, colors, things that may not necessarily fall with strictly within a sign code requirement. Their purpose is to preserve the historical integrity of the building as opposed to um, enacting um, the sign code, which falls more into your purview. So yes, they will look at more aesthetic could, approach. Could I ask uh, our preservation commission person something? Um, Re regarding the um, what what our action is in planning and zoning, what can we mess up or what? How do we get it right? As far as you're you're concerned, um, I'm Kat Moody. I'm the pre historic preservation specialist for the city of Prescott, and uh, the way I see it, um, uh, in in parallel to what George just stated. So I don't see where this commi this committee would be addressing, you know, fonts specifically or uh, necessarily style of the signs. But I think that you certainly should be concerned about um, coverage, sign coverage area, you know, quantity of sign, um, maybe even going into ratio of sign to building frontage just in general. And then Preservation Commission is going to be looking at compatibility with the building and um, the overall appearance within the context of the Courthouse Plaza Historic District. But, but kind of the way we're moving with this proposal is almost every surface ha other than the columns would have potentially a sign on it. I, again, it potentially. It certainly is an awful lot of signs. <clears throat> including the interior inside the windows all of that that stuff that's hanging up that uh, may or may not be uh, that good from a perspective um, you know what 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 does preservation think about that in terms of if if we had signs everywhere pretty much we'll find out tomorrow morning <laughs> the, the meeting is t the preservation commission meeting is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. so the commission hasn't had a chance to review this yet. They certainly have their packets. Um, and so they're going to get the directive or findings from this commission presented to them tomorrow morning. Uh, and then ultimately, the, the, the findings of this commission and preservation commission have to go to council for approval, for final approval of a comprehensive sign plan. Where is your meeting tomorrow? Look. The meeting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. is here. Oh, thanks. Yes. Uh, uh, Tad, you, you were next. You had a comment? Yeah. No? Yeah, and you said he had it. I thought he did. Okay. But you were asking comments. Yeah. So okay. I'll give yeah. you mine. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, you have some comments? I do have a we'll comment. Just keep going this way. I'll get back to you down there. Yeah. Um, as some of you know, I'm, I'm an anti-sign kind of guy, even though my good friend Stefan Markov is quarterbacking this, this one here, and he's here today. Um, uh, it's a lot of signs for a building. I understand the retailers want to have exposure. So do people in office buildings, frankly. Uh, it's, it's a lot of signs. Uh, and I think Mel made a great point about the, the pillars being the only area. So uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this and how I'd vote on it, especially since we have historic preservation who's going to review it also. It just immediately strikes me as massive amount of sign in excess of what their code is. And it doesn't mean that the code is always right. There's spots like this building where the code probably doesn't fit uh, as it was really intended. So I don't know. I'm anxious to get into it more. I certainly want to hear from the owner of the building because we'd be able to hear from through him some of the comments of his, of his tenants uh, and, and what he's trying to do and keep that building open. But I don't think it helped you to have a sign, a picture here with signs plastered on the window. <laughs> I think that I think that may impact a, a number of people, but I'm the jury's still out for me on this one. I'm just <laughs> massive amounts of signs. How many businesses potentially are there, suites are there inside this building to where you could have each business name on on front of where they are basically within the building? The building uh, currently has four. Oh, oh, would you step up, please? So there are four. Yeah. yeah, and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Craig Hanning. I'm the owner of Bashford Courts. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. Um, the building currently has 14 tenants or 14 suites. It could be, depending on, sometimes they like to split them into smaller, it could be as many as 16, but right now it's 14. Uh, do we have any other questions for the building owner while he's up there? Um, yeah, okay, Terry's here. Uh, I have a couple questions. First of all, the preservation representative, I would like, I would like to ask you a question as well. When we're looking at the signage, what is your thinking about the lighting after dark of these signs? And how is that going to fit in with the rest of the buildings up and down Durley? Uh, my concern, I guess, is that it could, it, it's a unique building to start with. It's got unique suites inside and unique tenants. So I think we have to kind of look at what the owner is looking for in his presentation of sign. Okay. What, what is your thinking as to the lighting of these signs? So I think there's a couple of points uh, regarding lighting. So one of them is looking at how they're proposing to light the actual signs in the sign package, which you're addressing. So for the most part, their lighting is going to be very subtle. Uh, they're mostly pan channel uh, signs, like George is pointing to here, with a halo illumination. Usually that's an LED illumination, and it's just sort of a light halo of light behind the letters. So there's no uh, really sort of glaring, um, you know, super lit kind of signage that's being proposed in those blue sign zones. On the back of the building is the only place they're looking at the gooseneck fixtures, which would be brighter um, and, and have potentially more of a splash down the, um, the wall. The other thing that it comes into play here, and this is not under your review, but you did receive the information on that painting and lighting plan because they do have lighting components called out there that preservation will be reviewing tomorrow morning. So that includes the up lights on the columns that light the flags. So there's some up lights associated there. There's the star lights, which have a halo illumination, those metal stars up at the top. Um, and then they have some down lights b beneath the horizontal canopy and then they're proposing LED and LED strip which ends up looking a lot like a neon strip along the edge of the canopy. So that lighting and painting plan which as George stated earlier extends across both the Bashford Courts building and the Burmester building 
to create a comprehensive, you know, two building, but it reads as one um, facade, that lighting plan is going before Preservation Commission tomorrow. Uh, so that's one aspect of what things are gonna look like at night. So those are sort of building lighting features. Then the, uh, the sign type, the, the blue zone, I think that's type two, those are um, pretty conservatively lit as a sign type. And that's consistent with signs that have been approved by Preservation Commission around downtown. Preservation Commission does not approve at this point the one of the sign types that's you know considered not acceptable at this point are fluorescent um, cabinet style signs you know with that sort of that poly insert where the entire face of the, the sign panel ends up getting lit and so those signs are generally no longer approved uh, in the Courthouse Plaza District. So we're seeing approval of pan channel individual cutout letters with halo illumination on a regular basis. Okay, thank you. I got a question for, for the owner. Uh, is it your intentions, and just hypothetically, if you had a national tenant come in there that has their own national branding, would that be allowed or would you require them to fit into what is consistently planned for the balance? I would like to be consistent. And, and if you'd allow me a moment maybe to just back up and sort of give you my big picture. Could you move up a little closer sure. to the mic? My apologies. Um, so I actually grew up in Prescott, so this is kind of fun. I moved away 40 years ago to go to college. So anyway, this is kind of, it was the J.C. Penney store when I was a kid. Yeah. So um, Some of us. the... <laughs> My overall, you know, basically the things we're addressing partly today and, and tomorrow is signage, exterior lighting, and paint. What I've wanted to do is clean up the exterior some and make it consistent. And so I have the world's most sensitive eyes, so the lighting to me is a huge deal that it not have glare, that it be subtle. Um, the paint, we just think it needs updating because it's kind of yellow, and so we've designed it with some trim colors up the columns. A um, couple of comments on the signage. The staff has told me that the windows are not really a part of the code or city's purview, but I don't like looking in there and seeing sort of the junk in the windows as it is today. So regardless of the city code, we are going through and we're putting window tint in all of the windows. So it shields for the most part, either product or inventory or things like that. And we will not allow signage in the windows. And, and I don't know the legalities, but if you wanted us to stipulate to that, I'd be happy to do so. We want this to be tasteful and respectful. People love the building, but I don't want to schlock it up. So um, from the practical standpoint, I will tell you since buying the building a year ago, July, you know, we've lost several tenants and the common theme is people don't know we're here. Um, and so we have a lot of tenants screaming about, you know, signage and no one knows we're here and their business is down 20, 25 percent. And I suspect some of that is simply the effects of the Internet age of people buying more online. But we have, besides the Prescott Brewing Company as our major tenant, we have a bunch of small tenants, and uh, they're screaming at me daily about how do we get more traffic in here? We're suffering. So, and we've spent about a quarter million dollars remodeling the interior of the building. We're almost done, not quite, which I'd like to think would help. Um, again, on the outside, we want the lettering to be consistent and tasteful. <coughs> So that's Thank just you. kind of my general thought. Mr. Chair, I have a few questions of the owner. Mm -hmm. First of all, I was going to ask you for an overview for the benefit of the people that are watching this on TV, but you did a good job of explaining why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, earlier, we had a question about the stars and where do the stars go. And uh, we, before, uh, before you got up, we, we didn't have resolution to that. So where would the illuminated stars go? I, and it, it seems like looking at the plan that somebody between the signage people and the lighting people, somebody goofed. So I think the 
appropriate place for the lighted stars is on the top band, two to the left of the world's oldest rodeo and two to the right on the Burmester building. Thank you. Hey, Mel, didn't you have something? Oh, yes, while well, you're up there. Um, it's a minor point, but I, I didn't understand it. On page three, the uh, sign criteria uh, um, under Windows signs, there's a sentence there. I read it a couple times, and I'm not sure I know what it means. Page three, uh, Roman numeral three, number three, says all storefront graphics are to be installed first surface to tenant frontage windows slash doors. I, I, I could not understand that. What does that mean? It's funny that they put that there. That's interior. Because all the interior, the doors to the suites are, are inside the building, and we're redoing the signage on the inside of the building. So I, I suspect that, again, Oh, okay. I don't. I don't want to do anything on the exterior windows in terms of signage. So that doesn't apply no. to this application. Okay. I had a couple questions for the staff. While George is here, sir. <laughs> I know you're not leaving. <laughs> um, page on page three, the sign criteria. Um, Uh, number under general requirements 21 flashing moving or audible signs will not be permitted that's good don't take that out <laughs> we um, the next item 22 uh, says um, with the exception of anchor tenant copy ten content of the signage shall not include the product sold without approval of the landlord uh, if there's a motion, I'm going to recommend that there's a period after the word sold. In other words, it would not be allowed. I think there's enough detail and enough signs on here with the, with the name of the, of the companies uh, and without adding the product sold. We've had similar discussions with other signage plans where they want to put the name of every doctor in every office and that kind of thing. I think the, not just the proliferation of signs here, but the detail. I don't think is appropriate. So I would recommend that we put a period after the word sold there. So so that would be additional products advertised as opposed to, for instance, if the business name includes the product, name, that's fine. Name. Okay. Uh, Joe's Shoe Shop or something. I mean, right. Uh, um, page 23. Do we want us under F? It says F. I'm not sure where F fits into the to the uh, letters here. Signs, components on the same page. Cloth, paper, cardboard, and similar stickers or decals um, not permitted. Should that also say vinyl? A lot of a lot of uh, commercial uh, owners put vinyl signs out because they're more. You know, they string them and tie them up whatever, temporarily, because they, they hold up better in the weather and that sort of thing. Should we add the word vinyl there, vinyl signs? Sep these are separate signs from... Fine with I me. Mean, is that okay? Sure. Okay. On uh, page six, tenant sign matrix. Um, temporary and promotional signs at the bottom under the column placement, it says placement uh, within 50 feet of tenant entry point on or along s walks, s walkways and sidewalks, sandwich boards are allowed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, now, if you go 50, f we're t if we're talking about the entrance to the building, and if you go 50 feet of the way, pretty much covers the whole sidewalk in the front of the building. And uh, there's, um, an, and the next column it says not limited. So the way this is worded, take it literally, uh, a tenant could have six sandwich boards out there all along that sidewalk and be consistent with that uh, line item. Is You're referring, referring to the exterior sidewalk? You're, it says walkways and sidewalks, I assume. So there is a separate city code 
outside of your purview, it's under directly under the city council that allows for the freestanding signs, the A-frame type right. signs. They're limited to one per building by that code. So that would rule. Right. So this would not be able to address those other sections. So that's within the right of way. That's public signage. Oh, okay. So we have a separate set of rules. So that one is uh, moot. It may also be intended to apply to small A-frame signs inside of the building in the walkways in front of each of the tenant spaces. So as you go as long as the city on the has upper floors. Overriding there. Okay. Um, would you put up that photo that you brought in today of the uh, west elevation? And that was provided to us by Chairman Sheets. Oh, thank you. Just to to give credit where credit's due. I brought a copy in today, so we had similar thoughts, I think. Uh, on the last page of your, uh, on page two of your staff report, uh, it says um, we may want to consider um, placing a maximum combined square footage, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and that oh, would. Oh, the, uh, what better show it? The uh, elevation that was in the packet that we received showed that entire wall as a blue. Uh, area, meaning it's anything goes in that area. And I totally agree with the staff's consideration of we need to put a limit on that because the way that this is written now, that could be covered with signs as long as each one is not more than 75 square feet. Or no, 130 square feet because that building is about 130 feet deep. It is. So I would agree with uh, limiting uh, the number of locations as they, they did on the uh, north elevation with the two locations. Um, but I would slightly change your recommendation instead of two locations, if you could show, yeah. I would recommend that only one location would do any good anyway, and I think there should be one location here and place a maximum square footage on what's in that area. Uh, the North elevation didn't say how large those areas are. Do you know about how many square feet is in those orange I areas? I believe they're approximately 10 by 10. They're 10 by different 10. sizes. The larger yeah, one, the I believe, is 10 by large, 10. About 10 by 10. Then I would recommend for this this wall, since you can't see most from here anyway, and I'm not sure who would read this one back here since there's no uh, roadway coming in perpendicular to Montezuma where anybody in a car would read it. So I think that would be more than generous to have a 100 feet maximum sign at the s south end of that wall. And that would be my recommendation on that. And then the last question I had was, is this overall plan consistent with the historic nature of our downtown and what we're trying to preserve about our history and so forth? And I would say it absolutely is not. As it's proposed, if it proposed this way, I'm afraid that would create a precedent for the rest of the commercial around downtown. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Might I interject just yes. a couple? So when the sign company put the, the blue band on that west wall, the intent wasn't for us to cover that whole wall. It was about we think this is an appropriate place. I've actually struggled about the location. I, I drove it this morning, and as you're heading east on Gurley, um, the middle section is fairly visible, but in your photograph, if you're standing, um, you know, uh, along Whiskey Row, that very southern corner makes sense. So I, I, I have no problem limiting it to one, and I guess I'd have everyone's suggestions on where the appropriate location is along there, whether it needs to be at the south end or the middle, I'm not sure. You do have some visibility driving up, is it? Montezuma. Montezuma. South of Montezuma. As you're heading south on Montezuma and look up, there is some visibility to that middle section. So, oh. this area is somewhat visible mm -hmm. if you're headed southbound. Yeah, well, this corner is key, and I think you need something here uh, because well, people traveling east on Gurley, uh, because the sign you're proposing that identifies the building is here, and they wouldn't be able to read that coming from Gurley going east. So you need so you clearly I have a need for a sign going east as well as north on Montezuma, that they would see that they would not notice that necessarily. So I think that's a key corner for you. Mm -hmm. it, I, my other I guess comment on the overall plan is, um, 
again, my intent is to keep this tasteful and, and mm -hmm. the lighting behind it tasteful and the lettering consistent. I, I would hope we might get a little bit of deference uh, because of the world's oldest rodeo signs on the top of the building because I think that's sort of a community benefit. Mm -hmm. um, on the back of the building, you were asking about signs. There's, there's an existing sign for the Prescott Brewing Company in that larger area on the upper right corner. The right. upper left corner is the only place that would be adding more than we have now. Yeah, but the, I assume the sign in the upper right corner for the, uh, for the restaurant uh, would be enlarged. Right now, it's fairly small. If you, yeah, and, w and that is not that large. So I would assume since you would have the ability, you might want to make that a larger font sign, which is fine. Okay. I have a comment. Uh, Mel, my question is sort of to you. Why would we try to restrict an owner on an existing billboard that's there now, may not be there in the future? And is it our position to try to design his signing positioning? I, I don't understand your well, logic. My logic is this. Even if that billboard wasn't there, we don't need to have multiple signs within that area. You say we don't need. Are we talking about you? Uh, the owner, the, the owner uh, what I feel is necessary to identify what's in that building, that wall is excessive. There's too many signs on the plan as proposed, and it's not needed. Forget about the billboard. The billboard doesn't affect as far as my concern. Well, it sounds as though the building owner is really going to have his own more detailed expectation on each occupant and maybe have some design standards. You're talking to uniformity and in, in, in size. You could have 14 uh, businesses on the front soon, but you're wanting to have that be a, aesthetic and compatibility within, within itself. Is Correct. Right? Yeah, the so lettering would all be consistent and, and based on what the city staff allows and says for square footage, the size would be consistent. So are you, are you going to go to each tenant and say, let, let's see what your sign's going to be. We expect you to be out on the front, or may they choose to not be on the front? Th that, is, that is an interesting position as a landlord because if you approved it as is, it was, uh, is it seven spots for tenants? Uh, nine. 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 And I have 14 tenants. So um, in, in my business, you know, it tends to be the larger the tenant, you know, the more you know, screaming, you know, they would do about having a sign. We obviously, in, a, in an absolute best case on what you allow, not everybody can have signage. And, I mean, that's the way it is in any retail center or office building. And so uh, I think that would be something that over and, – and also, you know, it's traditional in the retail business for tenants to pay for their own signs and to have, a, you know – structured sign with backlighting to build the sign do the electrical quite expensive 300 square foot tenants probably aren't going to write a ten thousand dollar check for that so for us over time it'll i, I just i don't know uh who's going to get it how that's going to play out um, are you going to have a directory as you enter there that identifies all of the businesses and which floor they're on? Or So they're installing actually today new directories. So when you walk in the building, if, if any of you remember, you walk in the building, the elevator is directly in front. To the right of the elevator, we're putting um, touchscreen directories for the entire building. So we're doing that on each floor next to the elevator and then also in the back hallway when you come in from the back parking lot. George, I believe you have a question. Yes, Mr. Henney. My question to you is I'm primarily concerned with the visibility and the frontage on Gurley. Okay. Uh, with, we've identified that there are nine potential signs available there. Are you going to control those from the standpoint of the design the letters, the letter size, the graphics, or are you just going to let nine different signs go out there? A absolutely, we'll control it totally, and my intent is to have the font and lettering be consistent over all of them. I think it would look really 
schlocky to have nine different looks. That's my greatest concern. A- that's what I'm saying. Not. And, no, and we would want it's nowhere to be, in here where it says that. That's all that I want. Okay, happy to stipulate to that because that's been my intent all along. But you couldn't have 14 on there because we only have nine spaces. I assume that you could have multiples in each one of those spaces if the business was kind of back behind that that part of the building. I, but it's somewhat dry. I don't want to do that. I think that gets to be too busy. So too the much. First, first nine nine get it and the others don't. It's not our responsibility. Yeah. We have traffic. I don't comment though. Um, I hadn't thought about this until Mel was mentioning it. Is your intention to grab the driving public or the people on the square? Uh, I think my tenants would say they'll grab anybody and everybody. <laughs> well, let me. Uh, you know, you have a couple guys up here that are fairly familiar with how demanding uh, tenants <laughs> can be uh, for signage. We certainly had to do that with, the, we minimized on our project. Um, I think we ended up with 24 foot sign, square foot signs for McDonald's and CVS and Dutch Brothers and uh, or other tenants who are coming in. We And we fought with them because they wanted larger. They wanted bigger. Uh, my argument with them was that they have their buildings and they're going to have their name on the building. Your tenants don't have that, that privilege. But I think it's complicated here when we try to appeal to the, the front of this building for the people standing on the square who are probably more likely the ones who are going to walk into the building, Bashford Courts, as opposed to those driving down east or west on Gurley to look at the side of that building and the back of the building. I don't think that, in my estimation, your signage is more for the pedestrian, not so much for the driver to come in. The other comment I had is that I'm I'm having some I'm having real trouble with the whole thing for a lot of reasons, but I think you need more signage there. But I'm not sure why you wouldn't promote the types of product in that building than the building the tenants. Having a, a sign that says Fred's Clothing, men's clothing store doesn't do the public a lot of good as much as men's clothing store or a mm-hmm. type of product thing, which may be more uniform and will not get replaced as often. I know your tenants um, come and go, as all tenants do. Uh, so I, I think you're going to be, just my advice, I think you're going to be looking into changing signs a lot with these tenants. And you're right, a lot of these tenants won't be wanting to spend the money for a sign there. I, I'd like to see this, especially the Historic Preservation Commission, look at this mainly from the pedestrian perspective. Uh, I think that's pretty vital. And what's going what's to promote that tenant, that pedestrian, to walk in and be a customer of your tenants? But I don't know. Right now it just seems like a lot. My comments. This meeting's been very helpful for me. I think I'm more of a visual learner than... Uh, than others. And uh, what I think I learned today was understanding that you have a lot of tenants and some of which have left because they don't know we're in here. So you're trying to address that with the signage. When I read the the, uh, proposal and I looked at all that blue space, I said, boy, that's a lot, but that's just an area in which you're going to put a sign. It's not the area of the sign. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I better understand what you're trying to do, I, and that today's meeting was helpful for that. And I better understand that you're trying to give some identity to the people inside the building and not suggesting that, that all that blue space is lighted sign. So th- the meeting's been helpful for me today. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Well, and I, I do believe that uh, strictly enforcing doing the film in the windows will help keep it cleaner that to me when you walk out on the square in the middle of the day and look in those windows especially that window below the world the world's yeah i sign. i just yeah i just don't like that thank you thank you on national brands i believe there's a federal law that says that you that one cannot regulate the color or the design of a particular registered yeah. corporate identity uh, signage like McDonald's with the arches and 
I, I don't believe we can require a change to their registered logo, but you can limit and regulate signs and colors of signs. They may not be able to put their logo up at the size they want, but you can tell them what size the lettering can be for the remainder of the sign. So small logo, larger sign perhaps with common lettering. I just want to jump in on that because a good example of just that case was Panda Express at the Depot Marketplace, which did come before Preservation Commission because the depot itself is on the National Register. They requested signage that was corporate standard, and it was a pretty big battle, but in the end, it was a compromise for them. They got something that met that was less than what they wanted, and it had their corporate logo, but the sign was much smaller and and more uh, uh, conservative than what they were requesting. It doesn't sound like we're gonna have, your target audiences and national brands anyway, it's more Prescott locals, local businesses. What you're focusing on, is yeah. yeah, okay. Got a couple of comments. Uh, just for the record, I'm Phil Good, city councilman. My comments here are not as a elected official, but as a representative of the veterans community. Um, I'm currently the senior vice commander for the VFW post and the judge, judge advocate for our local American Legion post. So first of all, I want to address the display of the United States flags. Um, I applaud the uh, Mr. Hanna and the owner for displaying our flag. Um, however, uh, we frequently have discussions about uh, flag etiquette and its uh, appropriate display of the flag in the proper condition. It should never be displayed tattered, torn, um, faded, or soiled. Uh, but when the flag is displayed, uh, it should only be displayed from sunrise to sunset. Uh, however, it can be allowed to be displayed as long as it's illuminated uh, at night. <clears throat> so I applaud the fact that they want to uh, illuminate each one of those flags. Uh, so your consideration of the quantity of uh, lighting here, um, I would suggest that your consideration of the flag lights should probably be excluded from your concern about the proliferation of lights. Uh, those are appropriate as long as they're not uh, glaring. And I think uh, the proposed um, modest illumination is appropriate. So if you could um, support the display and kind of take your concerns about the number of lights um, for the flags at least to be um, kind of set aside because there is a U.S. flag code in the federal uh, code of regulation and that is something that is recommended and should be supported. Thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? Any members of the public here? No? Okay. Mr. Chairman, just to round up from the staff's perspective in listening to the comments from um, the commissioners, it seemed that there may be a desire to um, limit the square footage of the signage and placement of signage on the west wall that you would specifically exclude signage from the window under the conference of sign plan at the offer of the building owner and that signage in the sign bands could be limited in some fashion either by square footage or as we noted in the staff report that no no portion of a sign could extend beyond that particular band location um, if those are helpful uh, we can work with you to, to add those in as conditions of your motion your recommendation I would concur in adding those specifications into the well uh, I mean it sounded as though the building owner is pretty much nodding his head in terms of what he plans to do regarding these items anyway that he doesn't want to have the, the signage be too too large within any of those areas or or be not be uniform with the neighboring signs we, we do recommend, though, that you, if you want to put those restrictions, to include them in a motion, please. Yeah. Building owners change. Okay, Mill. Yeah, I, I would agree. With, <coughs> excuse me, with George, uh, with regard to the west wall, I wanted to ask the owner 
Uh, what, are, what are your feelings about one location on the south end of the west wall that's an adequate size to make it useful? Uh, I, I think that would be okay. Um, I guess my only comment would be the billboard does complicate it. It depends on the angle you're looking at it. And so I don't know, again, within the rules, what flexibility the staff has to guide us. I'm certainly flexible as to whether it's at the corner or in the middle. Um, so I don't know, those are my thoughts. Mr. Thank Chairman. And George, he can't sell that space, can he? And advertise a medical complex to compete against the billboard? No. Sign, signage on a building has to represent some function, a business location, or a product sold on-site. So no off-site signage could go there. George. George? Do you control that billboard sign? No. No control whatsoever? No. I have no idea who owns it, if it's that building or if it's separate. I actually believe the billboard is owned separately from the building that it's placed on. It is. Well, I thought Steve Pierce owned both both of them. Does it matter? I don't believe um, so. I have a question for Cat Moody. Would it be safe to assume that in that in the not too distant future you'd get the same type of sign request from the Burmeister building? Uh, we could. I actually met with the biz building owner of the Burmester building um, to let him know that this package was coming forward, and he's well aware of the paint and lighting because he's been working with the Bashford Courts owner on that. And he felt that um, he was interested in potentially matching the building, the Bashford Courts building identifier signage in front of his building to to have them be in parallel so that it would be Bashford Kurt Court's Burmester uh, on the east side there for the Burmester building. So I know he's interested in that potentially. I also know that he is interested in potentially having a sign placed on the east side of his building, which would be sort of analogous to that west face um, signage that would be a building identifier on his building. I do not know if he's intending to pursue a comprehensive sign plan or not. It didn't sound like it, but he certainly has the right to do that if he wants to do that. Thank you. I, I, I really anticipate that's gonna happen. It, it could certainly I happen. I think Prudence would say that we should anticipate that it's gonna happen at some point. So what we allow on this, probably was it two thirds, one third of the frontage is the Bashford Court and one third is roughly. Yeah. And I think I, we have to look at this building as a whole and what's going to happen here. So um, I think that should be a consideration that we make. Uh, agreed. And I think uh, a direction that is going to be discussed tomorrow morning as far as those blue sign bands on the front um, and in my staff report to Preservation Commission. It's also noted that we may want to limit, you know, to a percentage of that blue block, uh, you know, that sign zone, say, so that the sign can't occupy, you know, because if the signs did occupy the entire square footage of those blue blocks, it would just be a massive sign. So <clears throat> yeah. I, I think the, the zones are appropriate. They are in the sign band. The preservation master, master plan recommends signs be placed in those sign bands, so that's the placement is appropriate. But to fill the entire band with signage would be a bit much. And I do believe that the building owner has the best intentions, but like George said, putting it in the motion and having it be in writing places that in the comprehensive sign plan, and then any future building owners will have to adhere to that. <coughs> well, thank you. Uh, Ms. Moody, that's, that's very helpful. That, that actually helps me feel better about the building. Yeah, Terry has something here. Uh, George, I have a question about the windows. You said that um, the city does not, in their code, cover any signs on the windows. And, and that's it, correct. If they're placed inside of the window and visible from outside, our code ex excludes them. It exempts them. And I know the owner is represented that he's not going to allow it. but. With all the signage that's going on on the outside of the building, 
how do we protect those windows should a new owner come into place will you put some kind of restrictions in there and is that allowable for the owner to put restrictions on no signage in the windows it's certainly allowable for the owner to restrict signage placement on or within his building we have um, general requirements in our code and because of the common theme of having signs on doors and windows we generally have never um, included them in the sign square footage calculations but that doesn't mean that the building owner cannot I would be happy to stipulate as a part of the sign approval process that the windows above the canopy that you know, that we allow no signs or even that we do the um, you know the film on the window that would block the interior I'd, be, I, I'd again I don't know the legalities, but I'd be happy to stipulate to that I think that's a great idea how would that apply to any potential future owners though I guess if you decide to sell the building well I guess that's my question is if I was stipulating as a part of the sign plan could that be if if a, a part of it if a future building owner wanted to change the plan that will ultimately go before council and presumably get a, adopted by council they would have to go back to council to change that plan so this is a commitment on future owners George does, does that mean that the page here with sign criteria um, is part of the comprehensive sign plan so That's changes to that would have to come back here that is correct that yes where you could put something like that okay. thank you yep any other comments yeah I question the applicant again yes sorry to keep no, jumping okay. up and down good here. for me um, <laughs> I go in the building a lot but I never really looked at it from the standpoint of the size of the tenant space and all that kind of thing and uh, I understand some are better draws and some and so forth but um, how many if if it was limited to only the one row of four signs on the front do you have four of your tenants that you could identify as major tenants like the obvious one is the the brewery the restaurant you know that should be out there mm -hmm. uh, beyond that between them and the 300 square foot tenants you have are there four major tenants that would be the most important to identify out there to get people in uh, I have not identified who uh, obviously the Prescott Brewing Company is the no. obvious one because they're the anchor sure. tenant beyond that I have not identified specific tenants that we would allow to have signage. Yeah. Are you going to have a fee for placing a sign out there? It, it's tradition uh, in our business that uh, tenants pay the cost of signage. So, so we would require, you know, obviously that it be built, uh, you know, to the standards. But the cost is generally passed along to the tenant. That they would have to pay the cost but will you charge a fee for the space that sign occupies uh, I'd never thought about it it's a good idea it's it's uh, we're we're mostly in in bigger markets and in big cities and even in most of those cases uh, it's pretty rare you have to be in a pretty hot economy to be able to charge people for it so I wouldn't want to close the door on it if someone's willing to pay but uh, I wouldn't be holding my breath for that with 14 tenants and only nine spaces you might have a have a little conflict there and well you really have more than nine spaces if you're looking at the two additional signs in the back and along that wall there are more than nine spaces that were the applicant is applying I guess that for. would be 12 this is only the yeah. nine spaces fronting the street mm -hmm. But you're kind of assuming that if you don't see a name, see a name up there of a merchant, they must not be in there. It, it it's pretty common both in retail and in office that not everybody gets their sign on, up. I mean, everybody, especially in retail, everybody wants a sign spot. But e even in grocery anchor shopping centers and certainly in power centers, everybody doesn't always get a sign. And everybody wants one, but that's again, if you're 300 square feet, um, that's a 
you know, that's a tough conversation. You could follow what Ken, what Ken was saying in terms of in the blank spaces, you could say clothing, beer, 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 beer pub, you know, all the, whatever it might be in there from a category standpoint rather than by a merchant name. Wouldn't you be able to do that? He could sell Certainly up that, the spaces. That could be done. I, I am gathering just from conversations that the building owner is having um, pressure from tenants to get their name out there, not their product out there. And if that's the case, then our sign code would allow either approach. It wouldn't restrict um, them just identifying um, products or uses or um, businesses by name. Pretty flexible. Yeah, but he wants successful tenants in there, and so the more he could encourage people to walk in there, the better on, on his end. Yes, uh, Community Development Director. Pardon me. Uh, have a follow-on question sort of along those same lines or just perhaps a talking point. Um, since the discussion has been predicated upon the similar text across these nine fields, I'm wondering if the business owners themselves, and perhaps this is a question for the applicant, are aware that what you're contemplating is basically a common text theme with just their business name and not their actual branding or logo. Um, because that may become a discussion point um, later on. But I, I, I mean, we're predicating the discussion on the fact that we're identifying perhaps a common text and that's going to be most palatable to the commission and also to the preservation commission. But it sort of begs the question whether the business owners are aware that we're talking about just their name in a, in a similar text to the, another business name next to them and not their actual branding. And it also sort of plays to uh, Commissioner Mabarak's point about whether it would be more effective to identify the offerings of the total complex as opposed to the business names. And, and I think one of the reasons I mentioned that is that these businesses uh, are smaller businesses and they come and go rapidly. And if they do want to spend, I mean, you've got nine spots. If you put nine signs up there, that might look fairly decent. <clears throat> but if you have one or two, because the tenants aren't going to pay for the sign, it might look different. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really confused on this one. I just think, George, could you tell us how many square feet in excess of our code this building is being is asking us for just to give us a sense mm -hmm. you asked me to do math at a meeting oh. well throw it out you probably have a lot of mathematicians right here that could figure it out for you, if you does the owner have an idea of how much you're looking at there I, I don't I think partly because we don't know what size he have in those blue bands he's talked about not filling up the blue bands which is I love but we don't know what that sign will be within that blue band yeah, and the display, the, the way they presented it to us is, is a little hard perhaps to interpret unless you actually look at the face of the building. And is that a better one? Yeah. This is a real touchy subject because the Bashford Courts and the Burmaster Building are sacred cows around here. And, you know, you don't want to mess with it too much, but you don't want it to look in the future. I know the plans are great plans, but what happens in the future when tenants come and go? Will the signs still be up there? And, Gladys's flower shop is no longer there type thing. So it's a requirement in every lease I've ever seen that when a tenant moves out, they're required to take the sign down. And if they don't, we do. I think the question here really will be how many tenants are willing to step up and write the check for that quality of sign. I just... I, you know, this is my part of it, and I know I've heard some comments that they seem this is excessive, but my goal here is to clean this up and make it consistent and make it look better than it does now. Um, I understand your intent. I, yeah. I get it. You want you keep your tenants happy, and your tenants need to get traffic. I, I understand the drive. I'm just trying to figure out how we... Uh, honor the sacred cow and still keep some decorum in the downtown area. That's that's my only. Question. Well, and and I've not been through this process before, but I mean we're certainly open to either yours or the staff's, you know, requirements or suggestions in terms of the scale of the signs within those bands. And one other thing that we 
don't always tell you when we're going through this process, but I'm sure most of you know, um, approval of the comprehensive sign plan is not approval of the sign installations. They need a separate sign permit and review at the time of installation where we have an opportunity to look at whether they comply with this plan as, as you're going to recommend and ultimately as council approves. When that happens, if there are criteria that you've put into your motion and council adopts those criteria into the plan, it helps us make a determination much easier. This fits, this doesn't fit, it matches the the limitations or it doesn't match the limitations. Um, in regard to the square footage, I don't know and I don't have enough materials to calculate that square footage for you during the meeting. However, I will point out a couple of things that may help you in understanding um, why we were comfortable in making the, the staff recommendations that we did. As you can see on the building, each of those sign ban locations are, are very constricted by other features. There's, there's an extended area above, there are the columns on either side, and with the knowledge that the standard sign types are these types of sign, you actually cannot fill up the entire sign band with the sign because of the types of letters that are used. The pan channel type letters uh, shown here, or the halo lighted, backlighted letters that are shown here. Um, have spaces that are built into them because of the installation method. So you're going to have signs that fit with, within each of these bands but not occupy the entire band. Similar to what you have above with the world's oldest, oldest rodeo signs, those are the same types of letters, um, structurally the same types of letters as proposed in the conference of sign plan. Or perhaps um, similar to the Bashford Court name here. Um, I don't know if that helps enough in the request, the question about how big the signs could be, but basically if you have a sign band that that size and you put a sign in it, you're not going to occupy every square inch of it. You're going to occupy the majority of it, and we would expect that that would be the case. If you're willing to pay for and install a sign on the exterior of the building, then you're probably going to want as large a sign as reasonable, but limited by the structural features of the building to create these sign placement locations um, is a very good way to do this. You know, George, following up on what you had just said about the, if it's in the comp sign package, that helps you make your determination. Are you suggesting that we, we add things to the requirements of this? He already has his conditions, which every building owner has, the, the, the sign criteria. Are you suggesting that Planning Commission offer up some suggestions as to the sign the yes. themselves? Yes, specifically I'm, I'm suggesting you include in your motion the, those items that you want to see added to the comprehensive sign plan. This is one of the reasons we have you look at this is to give us criteria and future um, review criteria specifically and, for and us to see. Do you, th you think we're ready to do that today? I think you are. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it sounds to me like preservation is going to get down to more detail as well as the owner is going to get down to more detail also in terms of of administering the, the individual signs, and, you know, for compatibility, uh, lettering, lighting. You're going to have a lot of similar items that are going to be addressed outside of the planning and zoning. So, I mean, we can, we can add those kind of items, including the west wall, to a motion, but they're going to readdress that in preservation and, and the we, owner. We're going to do our best to make sure that whatever comes out of this meeting is presented to them. Um, one, one of the reasons that uh, Cat Moody is here is to see what goes on and what recommendations come out of this group so that they can be transmitted on to the Preservation Commission. That way you're not going to have conflicting recommendations but more of supporting recommendations as i look at this motion i i can see the owner's viewpoint on this you know making the tenants happy and what we look at as the public looking at this too we've offered quite a few different changes and there's been a lot of discussion about the material on here the way this sign package is presented in the total package, and I'm talking the total, all three walls, not just the one on the street, I would be much more comfortable in voting on something if we came back with all these changes in 
the proposal? Because there's been a lot of changes we've been talking about here. I concur. Same here. Uh, so you're saying punt? Uh, come res back. Resubmit come. with all the changes we've talked about. If you have things that you want to put in there too, like you want to say, okay, mm -hmm. I don't want to have any signs in the windows except for the lower thing there. It's mm -hmm. in the package. We, we've been talking about a whole variety of changes here. And I don't know if I remember. I would just rewrite the proposed motion to include everything we talked about. And then I think it's a simple meeting next month or next week. Your, your next meeting is the 31st. And <clears throat> be Halloween. Let's bring it back on the 31st with all those recommendations. Are you bringing Snickers? Yes. I think that's best for everybody. And okay. you too. <laughs> Thank you. So you know what you're getting. Well, some of the so, details we've been talking with are a little bit outside of our responsibility, too, in terms of exact lettering sizes and some lighting, and those tend to be items addressed either by preservation or by the owner in terms of what he wants to do, and it's not necessarily our our responsibility to regulate, even though, even though we might have good ideas in that regard. It's whether or not we we need to get it to that level here you know coming back and hey, make a motion yeah i just want to ask jim lamerson what he thinks about uh how we're if we're going in the right direction or not thank you george um yeah i've sat and listened now for an hour and a half um it's not our job to design his signs we have a code and does his Sign packages, proposed sign cat package fit within the code that the city's provided. And I think what was presented, it does. And the idea of discussing it's a good thing, so he knows what's on the mind of the commission. However, we got to remember our role, and our role is to make sure that the sign package that's being presented fits within the code that he's been supplied. Does that make sense, George? Yeah, because, I mean, it did sound like we're getting into good ideas for designing and doing the owner's responsibility and um you know bringing this back on the 31st i, I don't know what you know that's kind of what your you guys recommendations are and naturally we can take a motion and vote on it as a group and so mr chairman because you you have um you have the preservation commission meeting looking at the same thing tomorrow mm -hmm. What we're going to do is to attempt to create the synopsis of the, the actions, the uh, suggestions that have come out of, of uh, the discussion so far so that they see where you're going with it. While you won't have made a motion on approval of it, they will at least have a good idea of what your concerns are. Ultimately, we will have an opportunity to match up what they're recommending and what you're going to recommend, we presume, um, at your next meeting if you defer action on it today. Would like to add one thing. One of the major concerns I have with this is the amount of signs that is going on the building. We have a historic building here that I think is one of the prime examples of our downtown. And our downtown we advertise you know, as a historic area. To me, this building now is becoming a giant sign with the windows in it. You're losing the historic aspect of this building to try to put signage on all three sides of this, on a, in my opinion. Does it make sense for us to uh, postpone our part of it? Because it's kind of a unique situation. We got the Preservation Commission that kind of makes this a two-pronged two uh, approval process. And uh, I, for me, I think it would make sense that we postpone, hear what they have to say, and then we will have a little better idea how to move forward with the motion. May I make a motion? Well, how's the owner with that in terms of time, time frame? Are you pressed to get this done within the next couple <clears throat> of weeks? Or? I, I think uh, from a signage standpoint, that, that takes some time just in terms of uh, you know, once that's approved, 
you know, they have to finish plans and build them. So that to me is a little bit less of a concern. My priority in terms of timing is the exterior paint and lighting because I'd like to get that done before the courthouse lighting and, you know, get the exterior. But the signage is going to take some time. I mean, obviously, we'd like to move this forward and get it done so, you know, they can be in manufacture and maybe right after the first of the year start installing but just from my priority it's the paint and the lighting is more of a time urgency and those and items are on preservation yeah, tomorrow for their is. review yeah. <laughs> okay it sounds like uh we're go going in the right direction then in terms of cons consensus D does anyone want to make a motion here regarding moving the decision to the next meeting okay I move with consideration of SIG 19-004, I propose that we um, suspend our consideration until our meeting on the 31st where the city staff will come back and incorporate all the considerations that we wanted to make in a motion so that we can vote on it at that time. Second. You got a second? Any further discussion? You, you second it? Second, yes. Okay, any further discussion? We beat this enough? Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 7 0. Okay, thank you. And again, Pat yeah, Moody pointed out that tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, they're going to go through their, their side of the detail, and so. I'm sure many of you will will be here ahead of time because this is uh, you need another hour and a half or so to go through this. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, anything from the, the department? Okay. Meeting is adjourned.